For the last two years, advisor to the president, Ivanka Trump, has been leading a serious policy effort on opportunity in America. She's mobilized some of America's biggest businesses to boost their commitment to training and skills. She's helped modernize the federal government's approach to training, and she's pushed for legislation to reform higher education. Of course, all that the superficial establishment media wants to talk about is Jared's security clearance or whatever. I sat down with her last Monday to talk about jobs. Take a look. So your father, when he was running for president, he said, I'm going to be the greatest jobs president anyone's ever seen. That's right. And if you look at the facts, I mean, we keep being told facts matter. Well, if you look at the facts in terms of the jobs picture in America today, it's incredibly positive, record low unemployment, more um, uh, openings than there are people available to fill them with the right skills, et cetera, et cetera. It's a great picture, but the work that you're doing with the Workforce Development Initiative and others, other aspects of that, that's actually about the future yeah. and a long-term picture for jobs. Why is, can you explain why that's a problem? Why can't we just rely on a strong economy and assume that everything's going to be okay? Well, first of all, what you said is 100% right. We have an unbelievable story to tell in terms of this administration's economic agenda. So tax reform, um, deregulation, mm -hmm. coupled with this focus on connecting American workers with American jobs has led to record low unemployment numbers across pretty much every demographic, which is amazing. We have more disabled Americans working today than at any time in history. So it's, it's, it's incredibly inspiring. It's incredibly motivating to, to all of us um, to see what was being talked about on the cam campaign being realized yeah. and having um, just affecting so many millions of lives. But it's also because of the strength of the economy that we can dig deeper. We can ensure that those who are on the sidelines, you had mentioned the fact that for the first time in history, there are more job vacancies than there are unemployed Americans. Mm -hmm. But there are still many more that are on the sidelines that aren't deemed unemployed, who have been the forgotten. Have given up looking for work. The, the, the ultimate forgotten man and woman. Mm -hmm. So how can we pull them into the workforce at a time where we have the private sector incentivized mm -hmm. to invest in that worker um, and to train that worker for not just a job today, but ultimately for a career. So we've decided to really focus on the fact that since we have such record low unemployment, mm -hmm. we're going to use this as a moment to get the private sector to step up, really focus on the investment they need to be making in their workforce, but also work with us because at the end of the day, it's the private sector that knows which jobs are at risk of being automated out of existence. They right. need to inform us of those facts. We need to prepare the American workforce for that inevitability. Uh -huh. So technology is exciting. It's disruptive, however. So we have to make sure that we're working hand in hand with the states. Today, we had the governors in from across the nation. Yeah. Their number one issue is workforce development. Their number one issue. Yeah. And it's a great problem to have. Yes. Um, well, you can see why, by the way, because if you get someone into a position where they've got a good, well-paying job, that is the foundation for everything else you want to see, for a stable life, for a stable community. It is right at the heart of everything you want to see for the country. And that's what the American people want. They want to work. I've, mm. I've traveled across this nation. I've been to countless states visiting with governors, visiting various programs with private sector leaders who are really engaging in, um, in investing back into their workforce, reskilling mid to late career workers mm -hmm. who are at risk of losing their jobs, but also creating new opportunities, apprenticeship opportunities for younger workforce mm -hmm. and, and the next generation of, of American worker. And, and so I've traveled this country and I've talked with countless individuals and you know they talk about business optimism, yeah. small business optimism, big business optimism, but there's an optimism amongst workers that is deeply inspiring. And to see somebody in rural Appalachia who had lost their job, go through one of these retraining programs mm -hmm. and have a job on the other end and be able to work for, for the first time and yeah. be able to provide meaning for their, leave for their family and hear them share yeah. how much that meant to their family, their it's, community, it's their sense it? of self. It is, it is the greatest privilege in the world yeah. to be able to do this work.
So let's look at some of the specifics that you're working on um, and just some of the things that you've said about this. I'd like to dig into them a bit deeper. Yeah. So one thing that you've talked about is how there's a kind of bias within the system at almost every level against the kind of blue collar um, job against the kinds of jobs that don't necessarily that do require skills yeah. but not necessarily the kind of classic four-year college degree and that the system's geared to that one version of of higher education you'd like to see that change what are you doing about that well i think culturally for a long time we've created and perpetuated a narrative that there's one pathway mm -hmm to achieving the American dream and it's four-year university. And that's been instilled into American students. It's often American parents feel that that's the only viable path. So you have kids going into school, um, racking up enormous amounts of student debt mm -hmm. that they'll often take decades if they're ever able to pay it off without a skill if they ultimately right. graduate. So I think um, opening up the prism and saying there are many different pathways. It depends what it is that you want in your life mm -hmm. and taking the stigma away from those who choose alternative pathways, who choose technical school, vocational education. Um, at the end of the day, it's about connecting workers with their passion, with their jobs. There's very little opportunities for somebody who wants to go the vocational route, the technical route, because all the money pushes you into the four-year mm -hmm. college system. So one of the things we're working with Congress on doing is higher education reform and opening up Pell Grants and making them available to high-quality, mm -hmm. shorter-term programming. So there are many, many things we can right. do legislatively, but administratively as well, we created the National Council for the American Worker. Mm -hmm. that is working to liberate government data, um, get private sector data included, so people are able to have more transparency around the jobs that are available, breaking down the available jobs and the vacant jobs by the skill required to fill them, because as a on a basic level, that's where you need to start. If you're yes. a mid to late career worker who wants to learn a new trade, you need to know where your existing skills yeah. are applicable. And that's not actually readily av available information. So on a federal level, we're no good at doing the job training. That is By best way, done can I just at say, the states. That is such a refreshing thing to hear because for years you've had billions of dollars put into exactly that, into federal job training programs that when they're evaluated turn out literally do no good at all. Well, they've never been evaluated. So that's the, we spend billions of dollars yeah. across 15 different agencies on federal training programs that have no measurable outcomes. So as part of this council, uh -huh. we're reviewing each of these programs, those that work and right. we can prove work, we'll, that's great. Okay. Those that don't work will collapse and truthfully we'd prefer to block grant that money to the states um, where the programs are actually working and the governors um, and the local leaders know which skills they need to enable their markets to grow.